come on. You know, we've been, we've, been, we've been shouting hallelujah for a while now. And I think the Lord is, is trying to impress something on our hearts and our lives. Because this past Friday, it was all about hallelujah. What does that mean? We bring you praise. We bring you praise, oh God. Lord Jesus, that's for who you are and for whatever he has done in our lives. And so, it's okay to keep raising a hallelujah to him. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> I was like, are you awake this morning? It's too hot right now. You know, you have to be awake. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's so good to be in the house of the Lord. And, you know, it's just so powerful when you allow the Holy Spirit to just minister to each one of us in a way that He wants to, right? Right from opening prayer this morning and through the worship, God has just been speaking and ministering to us. Everybody say four weeks. Four weeks. What? What's happening in four weeks? Wow. Amen. Yes, it's a Going Deeper conference, the 2.0, September 9, 10, and 11. Growing stronger, growing stronger in the Lord. I want to encourage each one of you, there are flyers at the back. I know we, we, we haven't been pushing it as much, but we got four weeks. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell um, co-workers, family. Anybody that you think that are going to be blessed by these two days, uh, and even on Sunday, three days, tell them to come, because you are going to be blessed. They are going to be blessed, and God has got something. I'm so excited about it that, you know, God's going to do amazing things. And why I know this is because I'm already seeing pushback from the enemy. The enemy is trying to hold or discourage or disappoint or kind of push us into places and corners that we feel like, you know what, I, I don't know if this is going to happen or that's going to happen, but we are not giving in because God is bigger and greater. Amen? And we sing that song. So um, this morning, before we get into the Word, let's go ahead and I've got some I got a message for you this morning for, about Joseph. Remember I started last week, introduction, going to continue this morning. So let's raise up our Bibles and declare what we believe. It says that I believe that my Bible is the living Word of God. It inspires me, it guides me, and leads me in timeless truth. It has the authority to save me and to deliver me. It has the power to heal me, to restore me, and set me me free. Amen. Amen. You know, it's not part of my notes this morning, but uh, I feel that I just want to read the scripture to you. And it's found in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 and 17. And the Bible says, as Paul was writing, that all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach what is what? What is true and to make us, make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong, and it teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip His people to do every good work. And that's in the New Living Translation, and I love it. I know the scripture by heart in, in a New King James Version, but... The, the New Living Translation tells us specifically what it is for. It is for correction, it's for rebuke, it is for, to bring us into alignment according to what God is saying to us. God speaks words and wants it to come to pass for you in your life, not only in your life, in my life. And I am today, I'm telling you this morning, I'm so fired up that, that whatever is the Lord is speaking today, I'm receiving for myself this morning too. Because there's been a battle this past week. And so we need to continue to press in. We continue to think. So when God speaks words, He wants it. He doesn't speak it out there just for it to happen. When He said, let there be light, He meant it. Let there be light. And there was light. 
He, may, he means it for it to come to pass. In Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and 21, and it, and it summarizes, he says, they were not writing this from their own knowledge, but from the Holy Spirit guiding them. What Peter is saying over here is that they just didn't decide to is this great idea. Let's just go ahead and start writing all this stuff down. No, they were guided by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit inspired them, and as they continued to write, they wrote it down. And so, it's so important. I said this to say that last week we started God's plan. Plan of God never fails in your life. I don't care what you may think, what you may say, but when God's got a plan in your life, it never fails. Because God is true. His words are true. And so we're going to talk about the story of Joseph this morning and continue uh, to break this down as, a, as we go through it. So the story of Joseph is found in Genesis 37 all the way to was uh, chapter 43. So those are chapters you can go home and read it. And it's basically the story of how Joseph was the beloved son of Jacob. And he was the, he is the son that, that was the only son that Jacob and Rachel had. And so there was, there was a fondness in there. And he loved Joseph so much that he began to favor him among the other sons, you know, and, and usually when there are a lot of kids in a family, there is sometimes a little favor here and there, you know, but all kids are equal. They're all still part of the family. But there was little, here, Joseph was favored by his dad, Jacob, so much so that he, grew, he, he made an, a beautiful coat, cloak for him. And on it, and he just, and and he had the different colors, and he presented it to him, and he gave it to him. And you know what? The others, brothers, resented it. And they thought that, you know, here's this guy, he's, he's being favored so much. But not only that, Joseph was a dreamer. He dreamed. He, he, God began to show him visions and dreams. And he had a few dreams. And one of the dreams was, he was telling, you know, he's all excited about it. He's 17 years old and his brothers are older. You know, the Bible says he was just so excited about this dream that he began to talk to his brothers and says, you know, last night I dreamt we were gathering the sheaves and we were binding them together. And, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, uh, your shes began to bow down to mine. That's a pretty bold statement, right, for a 17-year-old. Sometimes we, I've heard some young ones, I've, I grew up in a, in a large family with a lot of cousins, and sometimes the young ones, they like to speak their words out and say things, and it says, oh, you know what, you're going to, I'm going to do better than you, and it's like, oh, or oh, oh, something else, right? And it makes you, it's like, makes you mad, right? But that's what it was. That's what, that's what was happening with Joseph. God gave him a dream. And so we're going to read a portion in, in Psalms 105, chapter 105, verses 17 to 19. And this is the latter part of what came out of his dream when he began to speak to his, to his uh, brothers about it. You know, sometimes when God gives you something, you need to really pray about it and, and meditate on it. Because sometimes it's given for you, and sometimes it's given for the corporate body. And if it's given for you, then you cherish it. Just like Mary, right? When, when an angel of the Lord showed up to Mary and said, you, uh, you have found favor with the Lord and you're going to have a child and his name is going to be Jesus. And, he's, and he's, she said, how, do, how can this happen? I'm, I'm not even married yet. I'm, I'm a young teenager. And, you know, it's like, I'm not yet ready for this, right? But you found favor with the Lord. But the Bible says in that, in those, in those lines, in, in Matthew, it says that, it says, but Mary 
kept these things in her heart and she pondered on it. It's so important, you know, that we, we hear what the Lord is saying, the, the Spirit of God, what He's speaking to us. So much of that this morning has been talked about, even in the songs that we sang. But Moses, I mean, excuse me, not Moses, but Joseph, right, got excited. And he began to say, hey, your, your shaves are going to fall down and they're going to bow down to mine. Now he's got a nice cloak from his dad that they are resenting. Now you're telling me that you're going to rule over us and, you know, your, your are going to bow, my shields are going to bow down to yours. It's a spiritual process. It's a spiritual thing, dream that the Lord gave Joseph. And what he began to tell Joseph was, and as much as a 17-year-old is like, I'm going to raise you up to rule over Israel, to be a leader in Israel, but yet he didn't start in that spot. He had to be taken out. And so what they did was one day they, they were out there and the brothers got together and they decided to get rid of Joseph. And they threw him in a pit. They threw him in a cistern. They tricked him over there where they, they said, okay, we can get rid of him and we'll tell dad that something happened and he's gone. Two or three days later, the other brother came, Benjamin came looking for him and he wasn't there because when they came back, the other brothers, they saw that he was still alive in there. And it so happened. How many of you know sometimes things just, happen, right? And you say, oh my goodness, it's happening right now, right? Whether it's good or bad. It so happened that other traveling traders was going by, the Egyptians. And so they conspired among themselves. So not only there was bad blood among brothers, there was also greed among the brothers. Because what did they do? They sold their brother for 30 pieces of silver to these traders. And off jo Joseph goes. Joseph is gone, going on his way to Egypt right now. The story continues that when they got to Egypt, the traders didn't know what to do with him. And then they found this man, Potiphar, that said he would buy him as a slave for his house. So you're not, bar you're not even sold once, but you're sold for the second time as a slave. Sometimes you feel that way, right? When trials come to us and, and, it, and it pounds our lives, you say, man, I just, I just got over one hurdle and now comes, here comes the second hurdle. Sometimes we feel that way. Sometimes we go through that. But still, the plan of God is still working in Joseph's life. He did not see it at that time, but he was probably wondering, why on earth, why did that give me this? Why did I have this dream? But he kept it and he continued to pray. He continued to be faithful in wherever he was, a slave in Potiphar's house. Then he was tempted by Potiphar, Mrs. Potiphar, 17-year-old. This lady was trying to seduce him, and wouldn't, he wouldn't accept, he wouldn't receive that. And so she created a false alarm that said that he was trying to take her to bed, and so finally part of her threw him in prison. It's like, what? This guy is not catching a break. God's plan in his life, God gave him a dream, God has given him a plan, but it does not seem like it's going somewhere. It doesn't seem it's getting to the place where it really needs to be. It's taken a different detour, right? Sometimes we do that in our lives. And it's like, God, this is not the direction I'm supposed to be going. But God's plan never fails, never fails. He's thrown into prison. 
And while he's in prison, he begins to experience, and he's honest, he's beginning to be a leader over there. He, and one of the cupbearers in prison also that was thrown in there the, from the butlers of Pharaoh was thrown in prison and he began to lead them and had, they had dreams and he was interpreting and God was giving him and filling him with knowledge and wisdom and understanding. But God's plan still never failed in Joseph's life. He began to trust him. He began to, began to believe and so when the cupbearer's dream was given to him, and he says, you're going to be released in three days. You're going to be going out in three days from here, and you're going to be released from prison. And that's what the dream was about. And he goes, oh, yeah, really? Well, if that's what's going to happen, then you're going to be back in the king's court. But remember, when you go back to Pharaoh, would you just speak a good word? Good word about me, so that I could be released too. See, he was trying. He was trying to get things accomplished. But in all of that phase, in all of that time, Psalms 105, the psalmist writes over here, then he sent someone to Egypt ahead of them. That was Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet with fetters and placed his neck in an iron collar. We don't even experience, we don't even know what that means, some of us. Most of us, I don't know either. We don't know what an iron collar means, what chains are on your feet. But that's what he, he had. And in the midst of that, God still had a plan for him. Because in verse 19 it says, until the time came to fulfill his dreams. The Lord tested Joseph's character. Church, I don't know about you, Living Way family, but I tell you what, there are times in my life where I see certain things that we're walking through. God is beginning to show us and test us and say, are you still going to hang tough? Are you still going to walk strong? Is your character still going to stand? The testing of character, the Bible says over here, the Lord was testing Joseph's character. He was building his character, even though he knew and he saw and he had given him a glimmer of the vision of where he was going to be. Last week I told you that some of us, if the Lord told us where we're going to be in 10 years from now, it was like, yes, Lord, I want to know, <laughs> right? want to know exactly where I'm going to be 10 years from now. Because you know what? Some of us, if God begins to show that to us, we probably will try to speed up that plan, even though God said 10 years. Or we may mess it up and we might be so scared we would run away from it. He might say that plan is, you're in the middle of the Dominican Republic or Congo, in the forest somewhere. See? Oh no, you run from it, right? I had no idea what God was speaking and telling me till six weeks before we came into this church. It's so important to hear and listen. God wants His plan and purposes to come true in our lives. He's building character. He's building us building us up. See, strengthen us, strengthening us. If you read through the story of Joseph, it talks about when he was 30 years old, when he began to bless the children of Israel and Egypt, when he was raised up to be the number two man in, in Pharaoh's kingdom. So what's that mean? 17 to 30? 13 years. 13 years. Some of us can't wait even six months or two weeks, right? We can't wait. We want it now. But 13 years for the promise of God. You heard me say this last week. There's two things that God, that we know about God. 
two things. God never seems to be in a hurry. Never. Right? He's always on time. He's always right there. But His promises, the best thing about it, His promises do not have an expiration date. They never expire. If He said it then, then it will happen in the fullness of time. Thirteen years, God was refining Joseph because of the certain things that he would have to deal with and work with. Many of them were patience. Many of the mindset that he had to get over it of being a victim. The victim mentality that he maybe he developed is like, man, I'm a victim right now. I got thrown into a pit. Oh, I got sold to these traders. I got sold to part of her again. Now I'm thrown into prison. You could develop a victim mentality. Or you could think about it and say, no, I'm a victor in Jesus Christ. Mindset. Bringing it completely under the Lordship of Jesus Christ to stand right from wrong. Building his organizational skills, building the way he needed to run at 17 year old, you know, being trained to be at, when he reached 30, to be the number two man in Pharaoh's kingdom. All of these things God had to impart to Joseph as he was growing up. To us, sometimes it might say, it's like, God, this is, this is hard. It's so unfair. All those years, what about, my, what about his family? What about his dad who loved him so much? You know, the brothers, they, they killed a goat and put blood on, his, on that cloak and they took it to the father and said, oh, he probably got eaten by the wildlife. And the father was crying and broken hearted. That's sad. What about his time in prison? He's like, wait, he didn't do anything wrong. He was actually trying to get away from Mrs. Potiphar. But he got accused and was thrown into prison. You never know what God's plan is unless you begin to walk it out through the trials and tribulations. God's plan never fails, church. Listen, God has all these things figured out into his plan. Everything was figured out. So if you are in your life, in my life, if we are going through certain things, he's got it figured out. We just have to trust him. We just have to trust him. God knew way in advance what it was going to take to accomplish his plan in Joseph's life. All of the questions, who? Who was it? It was going to be Joseph. Where? He was going to be in Egypt. How? All the, through the series of events that he had to walk through. Why? To reveal his redemptive power and plan in Joseph's life, and not only in his life, Joseph's life, but the very brothers who persecuted him, the very people that did him wrong. It's like you might say, wait, wait a minute, Pastor. So I'm going through this so that the people that did me wrong? <laughs> it's like, no, Lord. We start praying. It's like, God, we do a work in their lives. Can you get them? You know? Some of us even pray stronger prayers than that. But you realize that there's, God's plan is bigger. He said he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for the whole world world that everyone that believes it with him should not perish. It's a plan. A plan that God has placed. His plans never fails. He factored all of man's sins, all the mistakes of his brothers, and even Joseph's mistake, even your own mistakes of certainly sometimes just rather than not speaking it out and just praying and meditating and, and, uh, and just tending it in your heart, mistake of mentioning it out. But even that God covered. God covered that even that he blurted it out to his brothers. The promise and the plan for his life. 
Some of us may say, and I've done this before, well, you don't know where I work. It's hard. You don't know my boss. You don't know the family that I came from, the way, the way they were before and you know, how it is continuing to be right now. And God saved me and praise God I'm not there anymore. But you don't know and you don't understand that. You don't know what I've been through in life. <laughs> I don't. But God does. And that's why sometimes... We may think it's like, I can't accomplish certain things in life. Let me just tell you something. You're listening to a person here right now, and I'm standing before you that I never ever believed that I would ever do. I never ever thought that that's what God would have me do, and I ran away from it. I even had school teachers say that you will never amount to anything. But God's plans are bigger. God's plans are bigger. I heard a preacher say that he attended his high school reunion on the 50th or 40th reunion. And he met some of his friends over there and he was talking to them. And one guy came up to him and he says, Oh, he says, man, you are different. I listen to you sometimes and I've seen you have... Your books, you've written a lot of books and a lot of things, but you know what? When you were in school, I didn't think you would do this. You were, you were not getting good grades, you were not doing good things, you were, you were almost like a dropout. He says, but I read those books. He says, I would never expected that from you. And he said, yes, he told that classmate of his that he never even knew. He said, yes. He couldn't remember him because he was always in trouble, always running out, didn't have a relationship with him. He says, yes. But the person you knew at that time did not, would not have been able to write those books. The person you knew today is because it took a lot of work that God had to do in, in my life. And some of us are sitting here in houses that we did not build. Do you know what that means? Places that God is blessed and because of others who have gone before us and prayed and worshipped and, and thank God for the things that think we are sitting in the blessings in harvest fields that that others have labored in. That's what it means. We may feel like we have not accomplished a whole lot. But here's the thing. In all of that, God's plans, God's plans never fails. Why? Because the person that you knew that abused you, the poor, their boss that, that did not give you that raise, the boss that, or the family member that put you down, or the, or the teacher that did not encourage you in school, or did not help you get through your life, are they bigger than God? Just a question to you this morning. God's plan is bigger than that. God is much bigger. God is bigger, stronger. We sang that song this morning, and in, 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 I had, the, had those notes of here. It says, God is bigger, stronger, greater, better than all of those plans. Anyone that may have tried to put it down, God is bigger. That is why it's so important for us to understand this. Turn to somebody and tell somebody right now, God is bigger. Really mean it when you say God is bigger because He is bigger. God is greater. God is better. He's stronger. Amen. Joseph had to fight through that mentality day after day, every day, and the voices that kept coming to his head and to his mind, he had to fight those. 
He had to fight it. He had to cast it down. Because every time you have a loss, you're going to hear voices. Every time you experience something negative, you're going to hear voices and you're going to develop. The more you listen to it, you're going to develop a victim mentality. God's plan never fails, church. Joseph had to fight through it. You'll never get through life in a messed up way. It's no good. Maybe you just think you shortchanged. But there's something at work. God is working. Amen. God is working. He gave Joseph a glimpse of his destiny at the age of 17. And you have to trust God and go with it. Joseph's overcoming circumstances of all of these issues that he had, God had to work through that with Joseph. Thirteen years. Thirteen years it took Joseph to endure and gain what God was trying to teach him. Think about that. This morning, what is it that, that you feel that you think? It's like, God, it's too long. Or maybe it was just, it just happened recently, and you feel like, it's like, I need a breakthrough. I need you to, to show me. Show me, keep that in front of me, keep that vision. We sang that song this morning, and it says, I fix my eyes on heaven. Why do we fix our eyes on heaven? Because we are fixing it on the Lord Jesus Christ, the God who is bigger and greater. He is bigger. He was bigger in Joseph's life than that pit that he was thrown in. He was bigger in Joseph's life than the slave traders that he was sold to. He was bigger than the prison cell that he was thrown into. God is bigger than all of that. And he wants to do that and accomplish that in your lives. The cool thing is that Joseph, every step that he walked, every place that he was in, was a step closer to his destiny. He got thrown into the pit, he was a step closer to his destiny. He got sold twice as a slave, guess what? He was closer to his destiny. When he got thrown into the prison, he was closer to his destiny, to the plan of God being full in his life. God's plans never fails. We never refuse. We, may ref we, we sometimes may reject God's plans in our lives. We don't receive it, but it never fails. We got to deal with those voices in our hearts, in our minds. Even if we make a mistake, we should know that God is still bigger. People did me wrong. But wait, God is still bigger. Well, there's a pandemic that's going around. Well, God is still bigger. There's sickness that I hear and I see, and there are mandates and there are things and laws and rules that are coming out in this social world and this economic world. But God is bigger. Some of, us, some of us may have setbacks in jobs or illness, but yet God is still bigger, church. There's a season, this is the season and time that I'm talking about, is that we cannot take these things for granted anymore. I love it at the start of the service where Miriam gave an opportunity to get right with God if you don't know Him. 
Because it says there is no set pattern or time when it happens. If the Holy Spirit is speaking and He's tugging at your heart, that is the moment, that is the time. Sandra talked about, you know, the rich man building barns and vats and for the storehouses. I have done funerals in my life. I've attended funerals in my life. I have never seen anybody drag a bunch of gold, silver or their SUV or their car with them to their grave. The clothes on their back is all that they went. I don't know about you, church, because I am I'm in the place of my life right now, and I just feel it's like God says we got to get ready. And Sandra, thank you for that word, Sandra, this morning. We got to get ready. We got to be ready for the Lord. It does not, we don't know the time and, and when He's coming tomorrow. The Bible says tomorrow your life could be required of the Lord, and where would you be? Are you going to be in the presence of God, or are you going to be somewhere else? Oh, God, forgive us. Because it's, it's a lifetime of eternity. It is something that we, so we take it for granted. Yes, God has given us on this life, this life on this earth with abundance of blessings and overflow and we love it and we receive it and we, and we do with it. But what do we do with it? Because it, in turn, it gives God glory and honor. It is for those, for others, for us and others. That's what the overflow is for. How many of you have ever been down to a riverbed or a stream of water? I know everyone has, right? When you put your feet in that, in that water, just as this water is flowing, I guarantee you if there's a way to mark the water that just ran through your toes, it's never coming back again. What are you saying, Pastor? That molecule of water that ran through your toes is never coming back again because it's continuously flowing. Other molecules are coming down, but not that. If there was a way to mark it, think about it. It's an overflow. We sing that song for an overflow. What's the purpose? It's never coming back again because it's flowing, it's continuing, it's flowing into others, it's, it's blessing everybody else, not only ourselves, but everybody, because God's plan never fails, church. Yeah. Never fails. And we can sit here, we can come to church, and we can come at times, and sorry, the way, I, the way things are saying, I'm so fired up this morning because God placed it on my heart last night, is that if we are not committed, if we are not committed, we're literally standing on a banana peel. Do you know what that means? You're going to slip. That's scary. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much money you make, I don't care what it is, but when you are standing on a banana peel, you're going to slip, you're going to fall. And if that's how you take God to be, then it's on you. God is bigger, and He's calling us to a new level. He's calling us and I am excited about this conference that we're going to have in four weeks because he's going to take us to new levels. But he's constantly said that it is the remnant. So you may be in prison, you may be whatever it is that you're experiencing. Pharaoh summons Joseph. He says, I've got this dream and I don't even know what it is. And if you read the Bible in, in, in chapter uh, in, I believe it's in chapter 42, where Pharaoh says, and he says, for two years he is struggling with this dream, with no interpretation, and here it is, Joseph is still in prison, and the cupbearer completely forgets about it, and casually one day he hears him say, well, this dream, I've had it for two years, I don't know what, and he says, whoa, wait, wait a minute, I know a guy who interprets dreams. Really? Where is he? He's in prison. 
What's he doing in prison? You've known that? You've, you've been released two years ago and you did not tell me? Well, get him over here. It's, it's like, right? It's overflow, blessings. You knew that? You didn't tell me? Even Pharaoh knows what a blessing is. He wanted that blessing. He wanted an interpretation of the dreams. He had reached out to all of his counselors and everybody, and nobody knew what it was. And Joseph comes and says, yes, God showed me. God showed me there's going to be the seven fat cows and then the seven lean cows, and they're going to come and eat up the fat cows. What he was saying was that there's going to be seven years of famine. There's going to be seven years of plenty, and then there's going to be seven years of famine. And if you don't plan in that seven years, you're going to miss out. So is the kingdom of God. If you don't plan for eternity, you're going to miss out. I don't know what to say. I pray daily for, for my family. I pray daily for my, for my church family, for my friends and anybody that I know daily that they will not miss out because the Bible says broad is the way that many will choose for narrow is the gate that few choose. I don't know what many is church, whether it is one or hundreds or billions. I do not know. But Jesus said it, that few go down the narrow pathway. For it leads to life and brought us away that leads to destruction. So you have a choice. God's plans cannot fail. If he has called you, he's placed you, he's delivered you, he's sanctified you, and he's healed you. There's a purpose in life that God gets the glory so that others, the overflow, can continue to continue to flow. That's the purpose. He raised up Joseph. He said, man, this guy is good. He knows I'm going to place him in that very area. Sometimes we may think, it's like, oh, well, you know what? That's not the place I need to be in. Pastor, I have all of this, I don't know, talent or whatever, but I, I, I can't, I just can't stand by the door and greet. I want to be up here. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but when God has a plan and he has a purpose in your life and he's given you some things to do and it's a talent, use it for his glory and honor. Many of you all know I just started in the month of June. The doctor told me, it's like, if I don't do exercise and don't watch my diet, these two things, she was going to put me on medication for my cholesterol and high blood pressure. And I said, it's not happening. She says, well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to have a schedule out for three months that you will be back here and I'll do blood work and I want to see a change. Guess what? Some of us need that, sh that shock and awe, right? <laughs> you know, so I got that shock and awe and I said, okay, no. I'm not going to get on medication. I'm going to have to go on a diet. And so I cut out carbs, cut out rice, cut out bread. And I started eating the healthy, and every day I walked for five miles. So much so, on Thursday we had a prayer meeting that we had to go to at 7 o'clock in the morning. And I usually go out at 6.37, so I couldn't go for a walk and come back, and it would be late. So I came home, and then I was sitting down, and I was waiting, and then I told Cheryl, let's just go you know, to Costco or somewhere. And she goes, why? What do you need to do? I said, I don't know. Let's go walk. She says, you go. So then I sat down in the afternoon and I just stayed because it's not what I do every time. I go and walk in the park around for four miles, five miles. But I hadn't walked that day. And then all of a sudden, I was sitting down at home and I just, I felt like a body was craving it, literally. So I had to get up and I just told her, I got ready and I said, I'll be back. And she goes, where are you going? I said, I'll be back. I went out and I walked my five miles and I came back and I felt like I got it out of my system, right? But that's how it is right now. When you get that shock and awe and you know you have to do it and it needs to, it, it's got to happen. God's speaking to us. I've lost 12 pounds out of that for the last two months. But I'm on it. I got to lose 20 more. <laughs> 
I got to go, 25 or so, right? But, but we got to be so intentional. You know, when God says something, you know, He places you. He gives you words. He gives you a vision. He gives you a dream. He fills your heart with desires. And so that those desires can overflow into others and, and people's lives and areas that, that are struggling with. Because we can build barns and we can store it up and keep it while we're storing it up for a rainy day. It's funny, talking about rainy day, yesterday's news, did you guys see in Las Vegas? Las Vegas Strip became a river. <laughs> they said water was entering the casinos. You never know. You're having fun, water sweep through your feet and you're gone. Serious. People, we don't realize life. Joseph accomplished what God had planned for him. Pharaoh named him number two to be the overseer of all of the businesses and everything, the economy of the land. And his brothers were blessed. His brothers who experienced famine in Israel came to Egypt and they were blessed. Joseph, God used Joseph not only to bless and save Egypt from the famine, but also his brothers and sisters. So what's this mean? That yes, when God fills your life with blessings, it's for others out there. But you may think, well, my pastor, even my family, yes. In turn, your family gets blessed too. God never, God's plans never fails. God's promises, listen to this, God's promises never fail, but we can fail to accept God's promises by rejecting His promises. God's promises never fail, but we can fail accepting and rejecting His promises in our lives. Galatians chapter 4 verses 4 and 5 says, in the ESV version it says, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons and daughters. The fullness of time. God's plan. All of that stuff that happened in the Old Testament, all of that deliverance of the, the, the children of Israel, the millions of people that were delivered, he said, in the fullness of time, he sent his son to deliver the entire world. In the fullness of time, God sent His Son to bring redemption. Ephesians 1, chapter 1, verse 8 and to 10, same ESV version, it says, God, and it's talking about here, Paul's writing, it says, which He lavished upon us, His love, in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mysteries of His will, you want to know the mysteries and the plan of God in your life, then you need to get with the Lord according to His purpose, which He set forth in Christ. So what's that mean? You want to know, people want to always know. I prayed for many people, Pastor, I want to know what God's will in my life. You got to be in Christ. You got to be in Christ. Those that are dead in Christ are alive with Christ. You got to die to yourself. You got to give up. You got to surrender. You got to give your life wholeheartedly to Him. It is set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of plan. It's a plan to unite all things in Him, 
things in heaven and things in earth. So it's like, it's not just heaven, right? It's here on earth too. He wants to unite. He wants to bring it together. It was prophesied by the prophets for 400 years before the Messiah's coming, that he's going to come. God gave them 400 years to prepare for it, but they failed the promise. God's promise did not fail because the Messiah did come. But they failed the promise. And so the Lord said, your future generations will experience the promised land. And so Israel experienced the promises of God. The word came to pass. His words came to pass. Verse 19 of Psalms 105, our text, what we read this morning. It says, until what he said came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. Tested Joseph's character. Tested him. Joseph has a word from the Lord. But until the word comes to pass, he had to be tested. He had to walk through it. So waiting on the Lord is very important so that his word can come to pass in our lives. Amen? Last passage of scripture, Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. It says, this is a revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants the events that must soon take place. He sent an angel to present this revelation to his servant John. What is the revelation? God gave this revelation to us to show us that Jesus Christ is our Savior. He's the redemptive one. God is speaking to us. We have to proclaim and receive his word. We have to understand what God is saying in steadfastness, running with it, staying with it. God said, and it was so. We've got to believe that. We've got to trust him. If God said it, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. God speaks, we receive it, and then we bring it to pass. So when God speaks a word to you, he just handed you the power to declaring his word in your life and to release it into your life. How do you, how do you say, how do you know that God's speaking to me? Through reading the word every day, praying with them every day, coming to church regularly on Sundays, to hear the word, to be a part of the fellowship with others that you may be edified and, uh, and you know, lifted up and encouraged through others of word of testimonies. To be a disciple means to be a disciple means to follow what the Lord is saying. That's how God speaks. God speaks a word to you. He just handed to you the power of declaring his word to release things in your life. So powerful when you understand that. God's plans never fails, church. Until the word of the Lord came to pass, the Lord tested Joseph. Until the Lord, until the word of the Lord comes to pass in your life, the Lord tested me, you. Are you willing to go through that test? Are you saying, God, I would. I just wonder what it would be like five years from now here at Living Way. Each of us, each one of you, putting our minds to Christ, not being victims of circumstances, but being transformed in our minds by the renewing of our minds, completely committed to the Lord, saying, I'm going to allow God to build me up, to strengthen me, to show me, to take me a step closer to my destiny.
I wonder. I wonder if it is possible that He would take us a step closer to our destiny. He is. We may back down. We may turn around and say, you know what, I got other plans, God, and maybe I'll catch you later. Or maybe it's not the season for me now, but I got to take care of certain things. I'll be back. There may never be another return or come back. May never be. The last passage of scripture says Matthew eleven fifteen, and I'll close with this. In the New Living Translation, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. We have physical ears. We're hearing. You're hearing the sound of my voice, but do you hear with your spiritual ears? what the Holy Spirit and what God is speaking to you today.